there's something about your personality that makes you go like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Okay, so it's so it's risky, right? What's what can you impart to 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 a bunch of different people who have been trained to be risk averse? I think the risk the risk taking comes from healthy fear. Honestly, mm. I have watched superstars at a convention become people at a table that nobody is now visiting. Like oh, it's heartbreaking. We are an inner we are in the business of entertainment and entertainment tastes change. So having that fear of like making sure I don't ever I'm not in a position I'm not I don't want to be in a position where other people decide I'm done. There it is. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm going to give this this note goes to Sana Sana Amna. She's a great friend and a great editor and when I started on Rocket and was giving her my plots and some of my plots and scripts she's the one who said to me this is good but the plot's telling rocket where to go next rocket's not mm -hmm. making choices mm -hmm. and when that note when that note clicked i realized that's also life like that's real life not just in writing we need to we if we sit around waiting for people to tell us we're ready for the next step we will already that time will have already passed <laughs> Hello. That's a professional hello, countdown hello, hello. if I've ever seen it. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to I didn't get a chance to tell you this, Scotty, because we were trying to get on, you know, I know we, we value your time. These guys don't. We value your time. I do. <laughs> the other thing that I value is your freedom. So we've got to come up with like a with these guys here, but we've got to come up with like that secret, like the phrase where yeah. like I I gotta go. You know, like I, there, there is it'll no probably, way. It'll probably me. be, it'll probably be something like, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll <laughs> right. I'll give, but, I'll give you this wink. Like, is this yeah. it? Is this That's not done? a wink. That's obvious. I'll just hit the stop button, and, and it, I won't stop. Actually, you just leave at your yeah, discretion. You got it. You know? All right, dude. <laughs> as I was saying, uh, we need you more than you need us. Thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, I did not, thank you, thank you, thank uh, I did you. not bother bringing up that these numbskulls are both dressed like some weird <laughs> G.I. Joe twins. You know, For what I, mean? I oh thought God, they didn't that? notice. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did not notice that they were, uh, they were yeah, wearing Scotty, are you, uh, Scotty, are you aware of our stupidity? Like our absolute stupidity? How I, mean, many I, do watch, I do watch about three minutes of each episode. And then yeah. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel like in aggregate, I understand it. I mean, the Mateo and I at this point. is never a good litmus test of how stupid <laughs> these guys can get, you know? Oh, but after I mean, we've got amazing. It's, 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 after the first three minutes, man. <laughs> I would just say it. amazing. All right, so well, you've, you've let's let's maximize the three minutes of your attention span that I think <laughs> it's going to be like super, like the most super productive. Thanks for being here, man. Thank uh, you thanks so for much. having me, guys. This is uh, we. You and I have uh, every time we catch up, which is every five years, I think. <laughs> you and I, you and I take the first thirty minutes of our conversation and just reflect on our history with each other, going as far yeah, back as. The first time that we were sitting in an artist alley and I can't remember what you were drawing, but your growth between then and now is just, if I say it's skyrocketing, right? It's under, it's underrepresenting the space that you're in. Congratulations on all your success, pal. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, cool, been, rats, it's been a long time. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's same for you guys. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, really what it, what it is, is us just saying how old we are. And he means yeah. it for me, <laughs> right? really, yeah. just so you know, he's not talking yeah. about you two guys. <laughs> um, I mean, it, I, I feel the same about all three of you guys of, over the years. Um, you know, even before I met Mateo in person, I remember CB sliding some of his art over to me. Uh, and right when I was first starting to write stuff and it was like, maybe you two could work together one day. And I mean, it was we, me and Mateo were, were like babies. But yeah, Eric, I think we, I don't know, it might have been 2004 or five or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Eric I mean, it was, was already a very 55 long back then. <laughs> <laughs> so i do i do get confused about the paradox of eric because i met eric at my age yet he had such a catalog of comics already that i like soaked in and i'm like how the f i feel like he just at some point rebooted 
and just restarted, yeah. like went back in time. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand the paradox of <laughs> all of your timeline. None of us yeah, understand it. Uh, none of it's us. None of it. The, the stuff that you saw in the beginning wasn't mine. I was just like, I was the original version of like art AI, man. I was just scraping everybody else's work and then misrepresenting it as mine. You know? <laughs> well, I think that's the MO for all of us at the beginning. Hey, can I, can I, you know, in this spirit of like the first 30 minutes of us just reflecting, right? Yeah. Where is the, it's, it's tough to, it's tough to sort of like gauge where you've, where you started and where you are now, but what is the key thing? If you could do the big reveal to the version of like, when did you say it was 2005? You could do the big reveal to yourself to be like, guess what? In 2024, sometime in February, your, yeah. your dumb ass is doing this. What kind <laughs> On of the like Inkpo mind- podcast, motherfucker. What? No, not this. This is a low point for you. <laughs> this is, this is the disposable this is the beginning of the end. that you like. F- yeah, man, just clock it. It's on the <laughs> this way. This is the it's downfall. It's a swirl. This was it's the mistake, Scotty. <laughs> it's yeah. all going to go belly up. <laughs> what is the thing? What's the big reveal that you would tell yourself in the 2005 version? What would you say to be like, this is going to be mind blowing for you? But this. Um, I would, I think that the number one thing that I would tell myself is you're, you are going to have, you're, you are going to have freedom of choice, which in those early years, I think we can all agree. You feel, you don't feel you ever, you Mm -hmm. might not ever have that. Um, you know, you, you feel like I've often said, you know, when when you're first starting out, you, you, it's hard to even enjoy the job you're doing because you're as soon as you start that job, it's usually a five issue situation or a 10 issue situation, or maybe you don't even know how many issues, but you're instantly thinking about what the next job will be. Yeah. And so your mind's almost always split in, in living where you're living. You're trying to get good at the job you're at. As soon as you get good at that job, they move you on to another job, which I don't think people actually understand. Like moving from title to title is like moving from like a different industry. Sometimes it just feels like you're relearning everything. So I would probably say you're you're not going to believe this, but you're going to draw away fucking better. (laughs) <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to want to weep every time you sit down at the table. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so you're going to feel good about that. And, uh, and you're going to feel free. You're going to feel free to get to the table and, and have made a choice and, and not, you know, it's like writing stories. You want your character to make the choices. You don't want the plot to drag them along. I feel at the beginning of our the beginning of all of our careers, the plot's dragging us along. Sure. We're like, oh, sure. I don't think I wanted to draw this book, but I'm doing it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did um, you have that awareness already from back then to be like, hey, I'm not really I'm being dragged by the plot as opposed to me deciding. Did you, I'm like, you can reflect back then. You can reflect sure. now about back then and be like, oh, yeah, that's clearly something that I needed to do as opposed to something that I wanted to do. Right. But like, no, I definitely was. I definitely was aware of that then um, because I grew up a, like I grew up an image kid, like reading yeah. books. I, I, the way that I thought comic books came into being was you made them up. <laughs> I, I, this is the naivete of me. Like, I just didn't know to think, man, I want to draw Spider-Man when I grow up because somebody had that job. Like, right. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, I didn't want to grow up and be, uh, be KRS one. Cause there's a, he is already exists. So I need to be my own version of, you know, I need to be my own. And that's how I, when I was young, that's what I, th- how I thought comics worked. I didn't actually understand that. 50 people have drawn Spider-Man over the years. I I don't know why, I th- but oh, holy cow. So, so for me, image was like, Oh, well, Todd McFarlane made up spawn and Rob made up this and Jim made up this. And yeah. that's what you do. Um, yeah. So when my first job was drawing, uh, you know, Iceman at Marvel, I was like, cool. Like this is, I mean, cool because I've, I've never gotten paid like this to, to draw pictures, but I still felt very, out uncomfortable like you know mm. i didn't know and i wasn't like an og superhero guy like i loved the 90s x-men and joe mad sure. stuff and sure i liked that stuff but i think i liked it because they all like him and chris Pacello and umberto they all sort of already leaned to doing their own thing and i almost felt they i could almost feel them how i felt which is like you guys are doing this but i can feel you want to do another thing mm-hmm. um and so 
Yeah, I just, I think I just didn't. So I've spent, I spent most of those early and then I got the spider clan series and human torch and then it just is going. And then you're like, well, this is my job. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like I, when I was on doing Spider-Man, I thought, man, I can't, next I want to do the human torch. You know, (laughs) you just, they come to you and they say, Hey, do you want to do this? And you're like, yeah, of course, because you're tr- cl- now you're trying to figure out a, a career, which that I think yeah. that's another crazy thing. When you're young, you sure. don't even understand the concept of a career, you know? Right. Right. So then it's, is it like my next logical question is what's the, before you were being led around by the next thing that was available to you, right? Like you're saying, dude, right. it, was, it was nowhere in my radar for my next thing to be human torch from Iceman. Right. Right. Now, as you quote unquote, get to choose. I don't want yeah. to, I don't know why I'm quoting that because you're literally getting to choose what's <laughs> the divining rod yeah. for you. You can choose everything now. What's the thing yeah. that makes you go, I choose this, right? Like, cause now it's and like the difference back then is just a very small bracket, right? Yeah. And yeah. now it's everything. So it's gotta be at times going like, what do I do next? What's the, what's the divining rod for you? What's the, it's what's wildly, the it's, it's as, it's almost as difficult. It just yep. doesn't feel as much. It doesn't feel as scary because you know that, within degrees it's going to work. But um, I always say like when, when we were unhappy and living in central Illinois, it was very difficult to try to figure out where we wanted to move to because we can move anywhere. Mm. Like, Mm -hmm. and you're just like, when you, when that's on the table, you're like, I don't know. You just feel paralyzed. Like, cause what if I pick the wrong one out of 50 places? Um, And I feel like that's kind of the same thing here is uh, mostly I, like it's like lately in these last, you know, five, six years as I, as I've transitioned to more writing um, as, as my main part of my job, I think it's really following that inspiration that I have in that moment and then doing it. <laughs> so if yeah. I'm sitting around and I'm yeah. like, if I'm sitting around, I'm like, man, it'd be cool to, man, it'd be cool to do a Western. Like I might not feel that way in a month. Like I, you know, but I'm feeling it now. <laughs> right, right, right. And cause I know my, the, the other thing is, is I know myself now. I know, right, right on. I know I'll cap- capture that inspiration for a hot little pocket. And then yeah. I'll be like, all right, cool. I watched all the Western movies. That's out of my system now. So now <laughs> yeah. the, the freedom now, the difference now is like when I capture that, I can run off really quick and call up Jorge and be like, you want to do this? And then spend a month writing that. And then, so now I just feel like, oh, cool. I didn't give myself time to, to, to unlike it <laughs> or yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. But it is, I mean, it's just as hard to choose. Now it is, it is really like, uh, you know, I think we're going to do something. I think we're going to do like a turtles exclusive cover here. And that's just because I fucking loved the turtles when I was a kid, sure, you know, like, sure. so it's like, look at the schedule. What, what kind of nerd boxes can I check for my childhood? That's a big thing. Yeah. Um and a lot of we control so much of it now. So it's not now it's not really whether or not who can pay me or what. It's not a, a thing like that because we do so much stuff on our own now. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's, it's always changing. Dude, expand a little bit for the people who aren't aware, but they should be right. When you say we, yeah. you're talking about. Oh, uh, here at my my company, Stupid Fresh Mess is, um, you know, about three, almost four years ago now. Um, you know, I, I started to understand the convention circuit and making money there and figuring out how to sell product. And then I'd sell stuff from my website and I was doing all this, but it's very difficult to do that by yourself yeah. alongside of making these books. And then, then you start having kids and, you know, I have two, two boys and, uh, there's just not enough time to do a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. So I kind of paused my online stuff and, and about 2019, I had decided, to stop kind of acting like I was ran a lemonade stand and actually form a business <laughs> like and have a plan and, and get, ri- and get risky and actually hire some people on and pay them uh, before <laughs> I knew if it was going all going to work. So um, I brought one of my, my best friends, Megan Hodges on to help. Um, I mean, at the beginning we kind of were like, okay, like you'll help me set up uh, conventions and, do this and we'll ship prints or whatever. Like we'll, we'll we'll sell a couple prints and original art and you'll do some customer service. And, and it very, very quickly, you know, she kind of was able to come in and she has a marketing and sales background and, Mm. and could easily see 
didn't know anything about our world. I had to, exp- we talked about this last night, but I had to explain what a variant cover was, you know, like, yeah. and then yeah, very yeah. quickly her type anus just grabbed all the information, did all the research. And then, so we have set up, you know, stupid fresh mess is the official company where we now are a retailer. So we can do our own retailer exclusive variants. Um, we make all types of produce, all types of products from, Custom. We work with local cool screen printing stuff to do like limited edition hand numbered screen printing. Um, we got T-shirts coming and hats and we do a huge number now of retailer exclusives for Marvel, for image books, for our own books. Um, we have a whole CGC situation that we that we That's do sweet. now, like instead yeah. of, yeah. you know, basically any time that would, if somebody would come to us and ask us to do like, hey, can you come inside books? We were like, huh. And then we would just go and figure out how to do it on our own. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so stupid. when I say we, it's stupid fresh mess. I mean, you guys can kind of see out there the rest of the building and the lounge area. Yeah, we can't yeah, see the you stack, me yeah. stack of boxes up. Dude, congratulations on that. So here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that exactly. it, one of the bigger takeaways, and I don't think that most people in the comic book industry understand um, – like the the marketing of what it means to be sort of like self-sustaining right like yeah. what you need to do i mean i know mean, i was, I was picking, how the last time that we talked in earnest was like me two hours just going like <laughs> and then what scotty yeah you know, then that was what? my conversation yeah. with you it was like and then what you know and i don't <laughs> yeah. think people quite understand how to you know get out of the hat in hand what what can you do what can i do for you next as opposed to sort of like playing uno with that and be like now what can i do for you right Right. you know what i mean like or what can you do for me right so people never make that understanding their own brand and into the transition of like becoming self-sustaining right and becoming an industry unto themselves right you had a clear understanding of that and that's something i've never asked you about was like was there a critical moment where you were like wait a second, I'm the fucking Scotty Young and now I can be a person. I can be right. an entity in of myself that just happens to deal with like client A, B, and C, you know? Um, I, I'm trying to think if there was a defined moment. I mean, so my path was uh, growing up, I wanted to, I didn't know how to get a job drawing comics. I didn't know it was a job, like I said. Sure. But so I was either going to be some sort of artist for a living or a rapper. Those were my two dreams. Um, <laughs> and, and, right. and honestly, right. up, 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 like, now, Scotty, sorry to interrupt, I but I want to know what is your uh, rapper's name? <laughs> oh, I didn't, what was my, I had element element was my, was my rapper name for, I think when I was a kid, it was like KB because like KB toys, but I spelled it different. And remember the, uh, okay. the toy soldier in the middle, like, yeah, I uh-huh. redrew that, but as like a B boy with his hat sideways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even, even when I was a kid, I was already branding my, my rapper name. There it is. <laughs> um, but, but I was so serious about it. And because of that, I, 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 I really understood the, the concept. I mean, I made mixtapes and sold them at college campuses on my, out of my backpack. And um, so I understood the concept of trying to build a, a name, but you just, it's so small incrementally at the beginning that you, you just are like, again, I guess being young helps because you, you don't understand the world. So you just, you just leap into it yeah. and you're like, this is going to yeah. fucking work, you know? Um, but I mean, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, I think after, you know, the the internet started and me and a bunch of dudes got together and made lead heavy where we kind of pretended that we were a studio. That was great. Um, That helped, you know, there was just a lot of acting as if, you know, like a lot of front, a lot of front, you know? Um, and then once that moved on and I started getting books, I started to realize like making relationships, Like one of my, I think one of the biggest moves that I made to help start branding was becoming close with Jim McLaughlin and some of the people who ran the wizard world uh, conventions uh, because they started then making ads for me in wizard to come see me at, I would do so many of their shows that I started having ads in their like, come meet Scotty Young at wizard world Dallas or Chicago or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's when I kind of started to be like, huh, like, let me, how can I harness this f- fake baby celebrity? You know, it's like a little baby celebrity situation. That, and I'm aware of that. I'm not buying. I'm not. I think that's the key is not buying into it. But 
looking at it. It's like winning awards. Like you don't yeah. go like this award tells me I'm great. This award is a thing that other people need, but yeah. I will take it and harness it. Like I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll wield this weapon in the way that it, it will work, but it, it, I don't get home and start feeling like, well, I'm worthy because I got one and I'm not worthy if I didn't get one. The magazine stuff started to help a little bit with that, but I don't know that it really, really kicked in until this cover situation started happening yeah. um, in 2012. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Which people, if people don't know, like the, the little Marvel covers, I always said, I can remember a conversation with Kari Andrews and Josh Middleton uh, years ago at Megacon. And I remember like there were so many artists that we loved Adam Hughes and Travis Shere and all these artists that had stopped drawing interiors and just were doing covers. And I remember my young ass just being like, Oh, they don't love the game anymore. <laughs> you know, just bullshit. Like just, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's, all, it's, all just, it's all just dumb kid insecurity of, of, and I was like, I could never just be a cover artist. Now, Mostly I said that because I <laughs> knew that I didn't have the juice to do it. You know, like yeah, I, I didn't have say, the skills a lot to of do cult, it. Man. Yeah. I was like, I didn't yeah. have the juice. I didn't have the skills to do it. I didn't have the name to sell covers like any of this. Um, and so I really never saw myself ever transitioning to any sort of cover artist thing. Um, and Dude, then, let, me, let me interrupt real quick. When yeah. I first, I think it was, I can't remember. It was probably the baby X-Men. Right. I think that was a set that was coming out consistently enough where it was either a retailer variant or it was like a weird ratio, right? Where it was like a chase, oh, right. you know, and people were charging a pretty penny for it at every convention that I went to, right? Because there was a right. level of rarity to it. It wasn't that. It was when I saw what you were doing and I say this with all due fucking respect. I'm like this fucking piece of shit. That was the word. That was the phrase <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that came into my head because I'm like, oh, he's got it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there was the Rubik's cube of what, but the, like the in, the button that you press and you unlocked right. it and you open the Rubik's cube and it was like, that's the success button, you know? Yep. And I'm just going to keep pressing Wait, that button. So did you know that Scotty when like, this was all oh, do you, yeah, calculated? Known. Like he, you saw, well, like, let, let's let him answer. Mr. I'm, te I'm telling you, he knew. I'm <laughs> fucking telling you. He knew. So here's the other thing too, right? I don't know how many multiple times that you've said things that I saw in the corner, even with a one and a half second delay, Mateo was fucking vibrating. You said things like, successful cover artist and Mateo's like oh please <laughs> please let Scotty not take only that, so it's I more specific than that discuss. he said TMNT cover and I'm doing one right now so I was like oh I'm doing See? one too I'm doing one too <laughs> of course you are of one. Course you the are. other one is when you started talking about like you know storytelling and how the what do you call it how you, you know in story when you know you're kind of sitting there and letting the plot drag you and then right. the, the other version where he's like you're letting the character you know move yeah. the plot along there was a big question mark over both of these bozos heads we're like you know <laughs> <laughs> we're barely trying to write stuff you know what i mean we're not we're, we don't know what you're talking about so i think a couple of times i'm like i think if there was a break in conversation there would be a yeah. dial tone signal in the in that particular case or mateo three or four times dude it, like i could tell like the leg went down from the couch right like, he, was sitting, like he was he was sitting super comfortable and as soon as you said cover artist the leg went down and he leaned into the microphone and i was like scotty please don't stop talking because i don't want to hear another other fucking thing about Mateo <laughs> talking about the most recent cover that he's doing, man. Anyway, sorry to interrupt, pal. Go ahead, no, keep talking good. so Mateo shuts up. <laughs> All right, so you, you had asked, did I? What did you say? Did I know? Yeah, yeah. like was this yeah. a calculated maneuver? Did you know this was the path to success? Like, no, this was I mean, a business so decision. here's the thing: is like all this. This was like the crucial. This was this. This was the changing point. Like the, the, the tipping point was I was working on the Oz books. I was about a, I was about a year away from finishing those up. Those had become a much bigger success than I had, than I had thought that they would be. I actually thought they would not work. So that surprise changed a lot. That gave me the freedom to just draw yeah, for, for five years. Um, I didn't have to try to. Mm -hmm draw Spider-Man the way people wanted me to draw Spider-Man. I didn't have to try to be a superhero artist, which I always felt a little weird about anyway. I just got to draw and doing that. I really found 
a peace and a comfort in, in, in the job, you know, and, 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 and remembered my old cartooning days or my, you know, like, oh man, I grew up on Mad Magazine and editorial cartoons and humor more than I did, you know, wham, bam and superpowers. So and let me get back in touch with that. So in the, when the, when the little Marvel covers popped up, it was a way to be able to tap into that old, like peanuts, Calvin and Hobbes version of my childhood and again, I thought that would be like a five. They were like, you want to do five covers? And I was like, what? Crazy. Okay. Like, here's this, you know, and so I was like, all right. Was it, was it Marvel's idea to have you draw like the baby characters or was that your idea? It was George, um, George Belliard, actually. He, oh, wow. Midtown, George was heading up the variant cover program and they were kind of getting that started. And Midtown Comics had come to him and asked for, um, was asking who was available to do retailer variants and George and I have been close for a long time. And, and, um, I had done, uh, little, the baby Marvel, uh, drawings for the heroes badges one year. Yeah. And George dug that. those. And so he said, uh, Scotty's available. And they were like, he does these really cool, like the old school X babies stuff. You should have him do that for Avengers versus X-Men. And so, um, now here's the funny thing to, you know, a year earlier or three years earlier, there was a X babies mini series and I got tapped to do the covers for those. Nobody cared. Like mm, they came yeah. and went. like, wow. just, it's, it's like the right place, right time. You just never know. Like I did five covers. Right. I mean, people liked them fine, but it, there was no fervor over them. Just like that. And then three flash forward three years later, I did that midtown cover and midtown sold like a trillion of them. Like, I remember I couldn't stop seeing that cover for almost a year in news articles and everything. And so that it oh, also, wow. again, it timing accidental timing of things is, is just life, right? Like at the same time, Marvel was doing, getting ready to launch their Marvel now initiative, which is them taking all their top writers who had been writing the same books for about four or five years and switching titles with everybody mm -hmm. and kind of mm -hmm. doing a new, new direction with everything so it was a perfect time for marvel to have like 50 new number ones um that's when gabriel came to me and he was like hey that midtown thing was huge like do you want to do a couple of those and i was like sure yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean yeah. cool um i still had a year of oz to go and all right i didn't know that at the time but um yeah i did five or before i got done with five he was like you want to do five more I was like, whoa, like, okay. Yeah. And so they would just schedule yeah. me a cover each week. And by like, without even realizing it, all of a sudden I had a cover or two assigned like a year out and then it just took off. Now, now I didn't do that. I didn't orchestrate that. But once I understood yeah. that this is a thing, yeah, I quickly was like, this could be my garbage pail kids. Right. Yeah, so like, like, yeah. boom. Uh-oh. He went out of the boom. Which card he go? Oh, no. It probably I think he hit exploded something. exploded on the boom. He hit something. <laughs> He's still there. But he went out at, at the right moment. Like, boom. Yeah, when the moment he said boom. Boom. He just disappeared. Eric, is that anyway, a Anyway, I'm red doing a TMNT cover, guys. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What else are you doing, beautiful. Mateo? What other covers you got? got? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm Dude, doing I can see Scotty's for... little little sound. Let's stay silent until he comes back. Yeah. No, no, I can see his sound moving, so he's talking, but we're not no, seeing No, something's happening on him. his end that yeah. uh, knocked him out, so we're just going to have to stretch until then. Talk about your All Teenage right, so, Mutant so Ninja Turtles his, cover. Is that a Whoa. new... Lighting. It's gonna be beautiful, first of all, mm. and then. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, right now I'm preparing a lot of stuff for the um, the Bologna show that we did together all a right. bunch of years ago. There he is. There he is. Oh, here oh he is. thank God! Did Mateo you hit some talking about his fucking teenage mutant Ninja Turtles cover to like stretch? You, you know, saved until us. You, came back. you saved us, Scotty. And he was just about to go into something else that was just as irrelevant and boring. And so I was like, glad oh, I fuck. fucked you up, Mateo. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. I can't promise that it's not going to happen again. It's been doing this weird glitchy where it just kind of 
I have my laptop docked into a studio thing situation here, so hopefully it doesn't do it again. No worries. Oh, good. No worries, oh, Scotty. Uh, as soon as – if it happens again, I've got plenty of material to talk about. <laughs> so you're back in there. Again, like, you're back in you know, there. In as but, much as your timing, Scotty, it's, it's, it's fucking impeccable, dude. Like, Mateo's talking about some stupid shit. You come in. You know what I mean? Like, Sean was <laughs> yeah, about to ask saying, about my the lighting. Important thing is timing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, anyway. in the middle, so. The, the, the covers started working. I started to realize like, uh, I could tell by the lines that conventions were growing instantly. I could tell like just all these things started to line up. And then I was like, okay, this is a thing. Like it's, it's happening. Marvel knew it. I thought it would be a quick gimmick. I, I really honestly thought like people are going to get tired of this fast. I mean, I'm having a blast. Um, and I quickly, the thing that, the thing that I think that, that helped me and has helped this thing last is I quickly realized there was no way that I could just do cool, like cool poses. There's only so much you could do with a body this big. So <laughs> I was like, I have to lean into the humor of it. And, and as, as many times as I can have a joke, like have yes. some sort of gag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that's been able to keep it fresh is making feeling like it's a more of a cartoon than just, you know, cover art or cute cover art or whatever. Um, I think that's been the, I think, um, yeah. Here's what I saw, for me. right? In in the time that it's been out, it's, and this, I think that's, it surprises you, but it's unsurprising to me because it's always like that first ring of like early adopters who understood and appreciated what it was, right? Right. And then from a marketing, marketable standpoint, it was going to do gangbusters regardless. I mean, geez, th- those things were so consumable. Like they were like, you know, superhero gummy bears for crying out loud like i saw him, like <laughs> the proportions that scotty is putting in there obviously it's like there's um there's a there's a narrative component a storytelling component that you infused in there and so that ring just started to get wider and wider depending on uh what was motivating people to buy it right, right. so there was the, the the pure consumer they just saw it enjoyed it for what it was and now it's like now it's the completest side of them like oh scotty put out another one i want the next one and the right. next one and the next one right but then there's the there's the business side of it that when they lean into that they were like this is so profitable for us you know there we go so that That's, i think that happened in stages that yeah it's 100 you are 100 correct the the thing that i noticed and this is the intentional part is the art of it's fun that's cool marvel still wants them that's cool um there was two things that happened kind of side by side is i did a year and change of these covers Mm -hmm. um retailers were making a lot of money on them and they were and i would notice that that's the one thing that's the one element a lot of people forget to pay attention to yeah We, we talk about readers a lot or we talk about too often we care about peers Right. Like, mm, yeah, too often. All we do is get together and we just care what our peers think. Like, yep. Yep. It, it, as yeah. long as Brian Stelfreeze likes my stuff, I won't think of it, you know, and I'm just using him because he's amazing. Right. Like, but um, right. like I like that kind of thing is never I'm like, well, I guarantee my peers don't buy my stuff, which is fine because I usually don't sure. buy their stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't have time. Right. <laughs> and you not, don't have, way, time. That's, not don't have in, time. that's not an insult. You know what right. I mean? Like, oh, it's yeah, just no, reality. that's not a slight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so once I started re- realizing retailers, retailers are very happy with these. Um, I also knew that Oz was ending and they asked me what I wanted to do next. That was a thing that hadn't happened. Which is like, what do you want to do next? Not yeah. here's what we want you to do next. Um, that's what I wanted. I was like, I don't know, but I want to write and draw it instead of working with a writer. That's when I got, uh, I pitched Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Ju- again, in the time it took me to finish Oz, in that year, it, I pitched that. And in the time it took me to finish Oz, all of a sudden news started coming out about the movie. And then by the time I got everything ready, my issue one was solicited and came out the weekend that Guardians of the Galaxy 1 came out. All right. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> so you pitched... A Rocket Raccoon Groot series before you even knew there was a movie being made? We knew there was a movie, but we didn't know. Nobody knew anything about it yet. Like, like Chris, Pratt, we hadn't seen any images yet. Okay. Um, nobody, I think maybe it was announced that Chris Pratt was going to be part of it. But at that point, Guardians of the Galaxy was Brian Bendis and uh, Steve McNiven. And it was like Star right. Lord kind of looked like Iron Man. Right. Because um, in fact, they asked me to do, draw an arc of his, uh, they asked me to draw an arc of, of Bendis's uh, 
Guardians run. And I was like, he's like, Bendis would give a left arm to work with you on that. And I was like, that doesn't make, I can't, I'm not going to follow up McNiven. (laughs) It was like like McNiven and Pacelli. And I'm like, or Pacelli. Is it Pacelli, Mateo? Pacelli, yeah. yeah, Pacelli. Pacelli. Um, I, I make that mistake all the time. So I'm like, I'm not going to follow up these two geniuses. Like, that's crazy. But I was like, what I will, what I would do is take rocket out. And, 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 and I literally said like, I'll just do my Lobo. I asked him if I could do Deadpool, but they, that Deadpool was wrapped up. So I was like, well, I'll just do Deadpool, but with rocket. Right. And, and so I pitched mm-hmm. that and got that going. Then over the course of the time of me starting to develop and work on it, then movie news started to come out which I was like, Ooh, this is going to be good. But Holy I had no man. idea the timing was going to work out how it did. Wow. Cause, cause from my, like my perception was Marvel knew this movie was in production. They needed to put out books to ride the tail of the movie. And I, I had assumed that they had approached you about doing a, a, a book that would deal with the movie, with the characters in the movie. You know, it was all weird timing. Not, it was just wow. weird. In fact, Sean, Sean, you, you actually were present during this initial conversation. We, me and CB were with you in Atlanta and we were down at our hotel bar. And literally the conversation was, I, I said, I think Oz, I think I'm done with Oz. And he was like, what do you want to do next? I said, dead. This all that conversation happened with you in Atlanta. You just weren't with us yet that night, that night. (laughs) Oh my God. So I said, uh, that's when I said, I'd love to do Deadpool. And they were like, ah, you know, you know, Daniel way was still doing a ton of Deadpool at that time. Um, Right. And then, then when we got back from this, we started thinking um, about it and about, you know, over the next couple of weeks. But so the, the the two timing things that were happening was I was already about a year and a half, maybe two years into the covers. And then Rocket Raccoon came out when the, the weekend the movie came out. The movie was a huge hit. Loot Crate started that year. And mm-hmm. my Rocket Raccoon number one was the first comic given away in a Loot Crate box. Oh, so <laughs> my comic sold about 400,000 copies that year. Oh, Amazing. my like, fucking God. shit. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Whoa. So all of a sudden, my covers are making retailers money. Rockets making retailers money, and retailers are like, "Sky is cool." <laughs> like, so all right, let's <laughs> let's 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 repeat that. Let's repeat the amount of copies here because I think Matteo needs to hear it again just to humble him <laughs> a touch more. <laughs> uh, now listen, you got, I'm, I'm going to clown on Matteo as well, but Matteo has sold a shitload of comics. By the way, I like know. Uh, I, course, I know I know Mateo's numbers as well. I was chasing those motherfuckers when I first got to. I was like, I gotta get some of these Black Science numbers. Jesus. <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, Black Science sold so pretty Rocket, well, but not not near. Oh, uh, here not, we go. Here we go. Not not near four hundred k, man. I wish. I, well, I would again, be a millionaire again. Now. This is Mateo <laughs> trying to tell us all how many copies he sold. <laughs> well, we this sold fifty thousand issue number one, but that's the best that we did. Yeah, I remember. As, as I as talked to Rick about compared to four hundred k, man. It is fucking like oh. yeah, but you know, four hundred k of a book that I don't own, or fifty k of a book you own. <laughs> Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but like you know, again, it's all right place, right time, and that's accidental. Like you don't orchestrate. That's not. Or- I feel like life is just like paying attention, and then when shit pops up, yeah. like jumping in, ready or not, and just seeing yeah. it, what happens. You know, it's a, um, luckily, yeah, totally agree. yeah, go ahead. Depending on where you are in your career, especially if you're looking at somebody as sort of like, you know, that's that's in the range of what you want to be. And is and most especially if you're like cynical about it, they'll take what you just said right now and find a way to like weaponize inside of themselves to be like that. It almost gives them a free pass. Why that success never came to them. Right. You hear something like, oh, it it just happened to, you know, land on on Guardians of the Galaxy weekend. It just happened to be picked up by a loot crate. It just happened to sure. it just happened to it just happened to. And I'm like, there, right. there's validity to that. Right. Obviously, that you you right. emphasize how right place, right time kind of played into the whole thing but what i want to help sort of like highlight is that it takes an industrious mind similar to you when you're like yo when i want to be a rapper i needed to understand what my branding needed to be right you were like oh, for sure. kb toy store because you understood hey there's something that's associated <laughs> with that 
to yeah. like an affinity for that logo. And then you were now starting to like incorporate into who you were. So I don't want to lose track of that ever, right? Opportunity comes for a lot of different people. So the example that you just gave right now, Sean, I was there or you were there in Atlanta and I was talking to CB about the next thing I was doing. Your industrious mindset, okay, great, let it be Deadpool, but not if not Deadpool, then definitely Rocket Raccoon and Groot, right? Right. Sean was in that same conversation, but he said, fuck this shit, I'm gonna go do some blow, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different, right? Where you were going into, how do I market this? Sean right. was like, how do I take this and put it into my nose? You know what I mean? Like, so it clearly, to me at least, it takes a different brain, a different programming to go like, this can, this, I mean, and jokes aside, opportunities like these show themselves, but then disappear just as quickly. Right. Absolutely. It takes a right. different industrious mind to go like, how do I basically combo this, like ch combo chain link these punches so that there it'll you be a knockout for my career. Right. That's the brain. That's the key. Right. right. The brain behind that. Some people, some people don't get attuned to. And that's why whenever, again, whenever you and I catch up for, you know, in five years gaps. Right. <laughs> Right. I, I'm always asking like, okay, so what does this, what does the geography look like? Not in, in hopes of imitating, but understanding the strategy and scale it up or down, depending on what right. my needs are and, and to everybody else who could possibly use it. Right? Sure. So yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it with the combo punch. You feel like, oh, I tagged, I like, the thing is like, this thing seemed to happen. Now, how can I now purposely take that and do another thing? Rocket right. working rocket working like that how it did i could have easily leaned in and drawn rocket for 20 you know that went on that went on for over 20 issues i wrote over 20 issues of it but i only drew five mm. maybe four mm. four or five because i realized this timing I didn't know if, I mean, I had been dying to do a creator own book for years. Again, mm -hmm. no shit. Black science was a huge, huge inspiration for me to see like really cool fucking out, out there books being made again. Cause people don't realize, people don't realize back when East and West, East of West came out and black science came out, like image was just having a, a new, a new resurgence. Yeah. Resurgence that was of, the time. Yeah. yeah. Selling. Absolutely. You, yeah. you guys were the tip of that sword. Yeah. And I was excited for, I was saw those guys doing that. I've been wanting to do it, but was afraid to go make the leap because books weren't selling outside of the walking mm. dead. Yeah. I mean, again, relatively. Um, so to leave that cozy paycheck that you get from a Marvel to go risk it, but then I hit Rocket Raccoon and all the hype and everything was happening all at once. So I was like, I think it's time. Mm. So that's when I told Marvel, I was like, I'll keep writing it, but I'm going to hand off the art. And I brought on Jake Parker to take over um, mm -hmm. on the art front. And then that's when I went and created I Hate Fairyland and, and decided to go the image route at the same time. So that was the combo punch. Like, okay, right, let me yeah. take, let me take the Rocket Raccoon and the, and the cover hype while retailers are really like, we love him and then give him another thing. And they're like, well, hell he makes us money here. Let's also order this book that That's ended right. up work. That ended up working, you know? Yeah. But see, so, this is exactly um, what Eric was talking about. It's okay. There's a luck like in everybody else's life, but there's also a, mm -hmm. a skill in seeing the opportunity when it presents to you. Like, like here you, this is a clear example. What you just said, it was like, okay, I'm having success with this thing. Let's use this moment, this, you know, momentum mm -hmm. to charge this energy to something else that I want to do. You know, other people wouldn't right. have seen that. Would, that You know what a lot of people would do? They would just say, okay, let's finish my run of Rocket Raccoon. There would be another 15 right. issues for you. And then I'm going to be doing my <laughs> thing. But it's, probably it would have been a little too late. So probably that yep, would be, exactly. you know, that would have delayed your, you know, your starting, your start uh, with, uh, with a uh, hate Fairland and maybe it wouldn't have been that successful. Maybe yes, who knows, but you know, again. Sure. Yeah. Mateo, I think you're, you're right. That's exactly what my mind is thinking all the time which is how can I seize this moment and this opportunity and stack a thing onto it and write it at the right times. And obviously when things start working, you feel a little bit more confident each time. Yeah. 
that, you know, confidence, I mean, the, the confidence of having it work gives you a little bit of like, it's just like anything like growing up playing basketball. Like at first you're, you don't want the ball. Like you're not, your muscles don't understand how far away you are from the basket yet. You know, at a certain age, it takes you years. And then all of a sudden you just understand from anywhere you're, yeah. you're hitting that. Now you want the ball all the time. Cause you understand 90% of the time you're going to go in. I just feel like yeah. that's just any of us and any yeah. sort of pursuit in our lives is once we feel a little bit more confident in, in the, the potential success of a thing, then we can start kind of like doing that, doing that beautiful mind thing where you're like, Oh shit, this thing's happening. Now the equation's popping up in my head, which is Absolutely. why the, where the next step and where the company, the company part comes in is I went from just fairyland and then realized like, Oh shit, this creator owned thing's working. But if I just write and draw my own book, I'm going to do about three books in my whole lifetime because yeah. we all know mm -hmm. all four of us know how long it takes to draw a book. Yeah. Like it's a Herculean task that we're all ridiculously dumb for attempting at all, all the time. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Oh, well I'll team up with again, going back to Sean that night. Here's, here's the other crazy full circle circle, Sean. That night at that bar, the, where the Deadpool conversation happened with CB was also the night that Jorge Corona yep, and Morgan yep. Beam drove down or drove yep. up from SCAD from Savannah, uh, Savannah yeah. because they knew that you took people to hang out at that bar yep. and they drove up to hang out and meet me. And I would never, I never forgot Jorge after that because his art was so damn good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now yeah. Jorge and I are brothers and we're, we just announced our third project together. I saw that. Congrats. Congrats. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, the, again, like these, these moments of going, okay, let me, let me start writing now because I want to, I want to, now that I understood writing, it took me about 20 issues of Fairyland and writing Rocket and, you know, the different, and then I, then I pitched and, and wrote Deadpool for a while. I finally got Deadpool. Once I started to understand and not be afraid, I mean, I used, I was afraid of writing the same way I used to be afraid of drawing where once mm -hmm. you get those muscles going, but once all of that fell into place and I was doing the, the creator own thing that seemed to be working, then it was like that next step of the combo punch, which was like, now I'm getting asked to do these exclu retailer exclusives. And you're like, well, that's a easy money. But then I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, like they're paying me one time and then they're making like, fuck, they're making a lot of money off these yeah, things. Dude. And then yeah. the CGC facilitators are now lined up at my table and I'm signing two, 400 books at a time. And I was like, man, they, like, I mean, I'm, I mean, they're paying me to sign this stuff, but then they're going off and like, and it's that thing of going like, wait a minute. And then beautiful mind numbers pop up in front of you again. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. if they can do it, like, why can't we do it? And that's, that's where like Megan came in when she came in and we, and she, we went to our first convention and we started getting invites. And we were like, huh, we did a few of those signings with some people. Then we were like, why are we just doing this on our own yeah. and you know with a little bit of research filling out some paperwork and you know getting a grip on everything all of a sudden we have a company now that we you know we i bring in more income from the company here than i do on any of my books or any of Smart. my you know Smart. so it's but it but that wouldn't be it if i didn't have the right like the right hook first it's yes, always yeah. you guys nailed it like the combo punch is always the thing yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, there's yeah, something absolutely. to be said about, again, having the industrious mind of like, regardless of the scale, right? You can take something like there's, there's this line from, uh, um, the village, which is that, uh, M night Shyamalan movie. Mm -hmm. And, um, the guy, there's a line in there that says like, my father was so industrious. You can give him like a hundred dollars and it'll be $200 by the end of the week or the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they're really, and my point with that is like, you, regardless of scale, you're paying attention to like opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it, some people go like, oh yeah, it won't be successful unless it's like 200 X. That, that's mm. not real. That does, it doesn't work that way. No right? way. At least not no. initially. Yeah. Right? right. Sometimes it can be two X and that's all right. You know, 1.5 X, but mm -hmm. you just have to take a look at, Hey, that ecosystem exists over there. I'm part of that ecosystem, which is like yep. typically what people, the, the space that they go into, right. So, to Sean's point, Hey, you're done with, you're done with rocket. Can I do rocket too? That's the, that's the typical mindset of like somebody who's thinking in that, in that space, right. you go differently. Hey, that's the ecosystem over there. How can I make it my ecosystem? 
Correct. Right. You're not stepping into somebody's like, how do I fit in that puzzle? You're like, I'm going to make my own shit. And so yeah. now I'm starting, but the scale is where, you know, how to, that's, that's where I think some people don't know how to make it work is how do I scale that down? Because I don't have 50 employees, a hundred employees, whatever it is, right. I don't have their right. infrastructure, but I know what works for me. Right. And here are the pieces that I can tackle by bringing on one, one person, two people, right. I can delegate mm-hmm. to them. Yeah. I think that's how it starts. And people don't have the industrious brain to scale it up or down, depending on what their, what their resources are. Right. That's exactly right. Like, um, you know, again, the right, the right circumstances helped. I mean, Megan, I, I was great friends with Megan before bringing, before we started working together. So I would, the chances of me becoming great friends with somebody who's like into, you know, watching predator and ghostbusters all the time and also have enough marketing and sales background and our kids go to the same school and we live like three blocks from each other. And we're both in a position where if this doesn't work, neither one of us are on the out in the street. Right. So mm-hmm. like all of these things sure. that line up sure. um, um, and then you realize like, oh, cool. Yeah. This you take that risk and you're like, all right, pay someone, bring somebody on and you scale up or down um, is absolutely that's it's really just the idea of taking a risk. And a lot of that comes. <laughs> there's one place that I will always I didn't go to college. I, yeah. I didn't any of that. But I tell people all the time. Almost every version of who I am as a, a business person comes from my like seven ish years of waiting tables um, mm. <laughs> because <laughs> it's like a, it's like a master class in psychology um, because you just, you, you spend six hours, six or more hours a day trying to make other people's money, your money. And every right. person is different than the last person. Right. And you, so over the course of these years, you're just learning and learning risk, learning like, oh, should I, how far is this, how far can I joke here? Ooh, nope, too far. Mateo's still learning that lesson. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on. Let me, give you, let me give you a point of reference. If I were a waiter how... now, I would be a really poor one. <laughs> like I would get five, ten percent of tip. That's the top that I can get. <laughs> I think the the X amount of people, the, the friends that we have invited to to come on to the show, right? I think they do so under the good graces of friendship, but not because they're gaining anything from this show, right? I'll give you an example. I just recently watched the most uh, the, the most recent episode that just came out, and these idiots talk about like taking a shit and pee. There's a video. There's a, there's a piece of the video. Where it's like just audio of Matteo looking out into this bathroom in Abu Dhabi. And there is just like a piss noise happening in the, in the background. And they think it is the funniest fucking thing. Now, you want to talk about like the line, right? Yeah. You want to talk about the line of like, hey, is that too far? Clearly, these dummies don't know what that line is. <laughs> And I'm sitting in the same leaky boat, just rowing with them, going like, I hope there's landfall eventually. Thank God you come in and add like a level of class to the show. Otherwise, oh, it'd be 50 episodes of, of them just peeing on the oh. floor with each other and just cracking up about it. You know what I mean? It's a bunch of kids smearing oh, mud on tickled. their faces and laughing their asses off because it's, oh, they, they think God. it's the funniest thing. I'm sitting in the background going, this may work. This, this, I hope this works. They clearly, Mateo is super successful and show is strong, but I'm just in the background going, like, I don't know, man. Let's bring Scotty on and hopefully it adds a band aid, makes the boat go further a little bit. Look, there, there's a thing that I, I don't want to gloss over, okay? Because I think you said the word a couple of times in this, in, in like the, the past two minutes. A lot of people, especially in an industry that has a tendency, not actively, right? But uh, quite accidentally makes people risk averse right there's something about your personality that makes you go like whatever you know what i mean <laughs> like sure okay so it's so it's risky right what's what can you impart to 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 a bunch of different people who have been trained to be risk averse to say hey rocket one next logical step is rocket two that's not right. what you were thinking you were like rocket right. one that's great but i want to go work on this thing that's obviously right. something that's been nurtured into you for as long as you've been alive right that's that's sort of cultivated but if right. there's something you can say hey start now this is what it looks like right start with these steps what can you impart it's uh, it, i think i think the risk 
the risk taking comes from healthy fear, honestly. Mm. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I don't think that I lead my life very fearful, but I have healthy amounts of fear that come from understand reality. Yeah. I understand that I understand this business and that every, at any point, if we have a favorite person, that favorite person is, is, is in a different stage of the career, their career now. Meaning mm -hmm. we have, I have watched superstars at a convention become people at a table that nobody is now visiting. Like yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that is not saying that their skill sets ever changed or any of it's not about base. It's just that entertainment. We are an inner, we are in the business of entertainment and entertainment tastes change. Um, yep. yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the me doing baby covers one year and three years and nobody caring and doing them three years later. And I, now I'm, I'm basically making garbage. Pill. That is, you cannot predict how entertainment tastes can go. Yeah. So having that fear of like making sure I don't ever, I'm not in a position. I'm not, I don't want to be in a position where other people decide I'm done. There it is. Mm -hmm. That is so the risk comes from, if I'm, if nobody's telling me I'm done and is it time to make another step up or is it time for me to say I'm done? And, yeah. you know, depending yeah. on that. And that's what I think I don't, it's again, I, and I'm going to give this, this note goes to Sana, Sana Amnat, uh, my editor, and she's moved on to be vice president of all the world or whatever of, of Marvel <laughs> comics and producer of Ms. Marvel. Uh, but she was a great, great, she's a great friend and a great editor. And when I started on rocket, and was giving her my plots and some of my plots and scripts. She's the one who said to me, this is good, but the plot's telling Rocket where to go next. Rocket's not mm -hmm. making choices. Mm -hmm. And when that note, when that note clicked, I realized that's also life. Like that's real life, not just in writing. We need to, we, if we sit around waiting for people to tell us we're ready for the next step, we will already, that time will have already passed. Right. I remember somebody asked me once early in my career, I started doing, I started inking myself. If, I mean, we all are old enough to remember back then, like usually when you broke in, they wanted you to have an inker yeah. uh, because mm -hmm. of the, the process. And I started inking myself and then I started inking and coloring my own covers again, which was not really done in those early years. Mm -hmm. And somebody was like, well, why do you get to do that? And I was like, cause I asked. Like, yeah, there it is. Yeah. And they were in that mindset of the way that it usually goes, which is you knock on the door and then, or you just sit outside and wait to be invited in. And then once you're invited in, you're kind of waiting to be knighted to the next level or next That's stage. Right. Or, and I just have always like, I, before I knew why I was doing it, it was that note that Sonna gave me that I realized I started kind of applying to life in general, which is like, don't let the plot drag me through life, you know, yeah. like try to make some choices on my own. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I would I rather, agree. I would rather something, I would rather fail at a thing I chose to do yeah. than, than everybody keep placing me in spots and it yeah. not work. Yeah. Because I don't want to, I don't want to be mad at everybody. You know, That's I'd right. rather just be like, fuck that didn't work than move on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, to your point though, again, we were talking early, I was making a point earlier about, you know, a cynical brain would say, well, Scott, he can make these calls because of the level of sure. success that he's moved into not yeah. realizing it's the reverse, right? Which yeah. is, Scotty yeah. is able to make these calls. Thank you. Because he yes. took that. It's, it's the other way around. It didn't happen yeah. because suddenly yeah. you were successful, right? Right. It, you were making these calls and then the success came, right? So, yeah, it, that's, it, that's it, a good, it, that's a great observation because we, we talked about this and, and Megan coming on over these last three years have, has been able to watch the, the end, you know, this, this stage of things and, she's always like man it's, she's always interested when people are like well yeah but you're you like right mm -hmm. and it's that what you just said and i will be like yeah but there were 17 years of not this or 15 years that's right a, a very different version of this like that's the right. version that we uh, you know it's a very different thing that you had to make to get to these places and and hopefully in five more years and, and or next year we'll be in a different place and i can say 
it wasn't because of A, B, and C. It was because of choices made. I was, it was, you know, it was the character. My character was deciding where to go um, mm-hmm. and not waiting. But yeah, you're, you're, you're definitely right. And I find that to, I think that's how it is with everybody. Um, it's funny. I do. There's something that popped in. This is probably tangential and going backwards. But when you said, you said earlier, um, you were like, when, when, that started watching and you went, Oh, you son of a bitch. Like the yeah. Rubik's cube part and you blah, blah. Yeah. I love that. I love that you said that because, uh, Adam Hughes years ago said we were talking with him and it kind of, I asked him like, how did you know? Like, he's like, here's the thing. When all, when everybody starts walking up to your table and saying like, Ugh, you fuck, you make me sick. Yeah. Like ugh, I'm so, he said when people basically are just telling you that you bother them, you know you've yeah. made it because yeah. he's like, like yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. You're, you've you've hit a level that's so good that it makes everybody uncomfortable. Like yeah. And so mm-hmm. no, it's, it's funny it's that you uncomfortability, said that. it's uncomfortability, at least in my case I'll speak for myself. It's an uncomfortability yeah. that comes from a level of admiration, right? Mm-hmm. Because the yeah. it, if there is to be a quote unquote formula, the formula was so smart, right? And then the platform helped leverage that formula, right? It's a bunch of little things that came in that, that tumblers that fell into place to go like, that's really smart because the proportion, like from an artistic, purely from a craft perspective, you're like, Jesus Christ, Scotty's just doing, you know, Calvin and Hobbes, you know, just having fun. It's yeah, so doodling. smart. And then, and then you're wrapping, you're putting the, the decal or like the shrink wrap of these mm-hmm. really well-known IP of these characters Right. And then you're saying nothing else. Nothing else is in the background. It's just going to be this gag. It's yeah. just going to be this character. It's just going to be yeah. this, these proportions. And yeah. dude, it's so freaking cons- – that's the part that made me upset. Not because, oh, I didn't <laughs> think of it, right? Sure. But because I'm like, Jesus Christ, he made it work. You know, like that's the other now, thing is like I tell people all the time, like I did not invent this. Like this is a right. thing. Like everybody right. does this. Like right. it's it's it, it, I, if you ask me why mine work, I don't know. I mean, I could back my way into it and come up with sure. some pretty smart shit or whatever. But sure. um, well, there's a reason yeah. why they did X, like you know, Art Adams did X Babies for years on end during those X Men right. annuals. You know what I mean? Like it's right. there's clearly a a light enough topical formula which is implementable, right? Right. But that's, you know, that's only project to project. But I really wanted to get, get to the crux of it. And you landed it the first time when I asked you, hey, if you had a time traveling machine, right, what would you tell yourself way back in the day? And I think the theme of our conversation now is like, you're going to get shoes, right? Yeah. But that didn't come with you saying hat in hand, how do I choose, right? Nope. It came with mm-hmm. like, dude, I'm going to set it up for myself. Yeah. And something it's, there's, there's, it's probably a ton to unpack. We have like, we've already crossed the hour mark of like, Mm -hmm. there's gotta be a, there's a version of you that says I'm going to be not risk averse. Right. Right. And also invest in myself in the best way possible. And that's a different mindset that we could spend a couple hours just trying to understand, dude, you, you proclaim that you didn't have the best drafting skills back when you were drawing like Iceman, you proclaimed that you were learning everything on the job and you didn't know when the next thing comes, but every single part of you was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do the things that I'm doing in the, in the career trajectory of being able to choose for myself. Right. And if there's anything I I can impart that to people who are listening right now, like it's, you said it right. You said it a few moments ago, it's better to choose for yourself fail miserably fall sure. face first into something than yeah. failing because somebody else pulled the plug for you. That yeah. feels mm-hmm. fucking awful. You know? Yeah. You don't want to be, you don't want to climb out of somebody else's hole. Like, yeah, you know, dude. if, 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 if I, if I made some holes and then I fall in it, I'm like, well, at least I made it. Like I yeah, can, yeah. I, I know the, I know which notches to grab to, to try to climb my way out of it. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of those things where you just, try your best to set yourself up where, you know, go take the risk, make sure you don't, you know, you don't have to spend the, like spend everything on it. But, you know, back in the day I was like making comics, doing some character designs and animation, you know, going to conventions, like just doing like 75 side hustles. So then when the risks came up, you're like, okay, I can take this. It's funny, right? Like I, like the image comics guys, like anytime you watch like one of the documentaries, um, like yeah, they're risk yeah. takers, but also they, each of them were millionaires. So you're like, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. if you were out, yeah. out in the street, you were think, all, 
Yeah. People don't yeah. understand risk scales differently, right? Like yeah. that's the part that that's yeah. the, the button that people don't know how to press is how to scale a risk up and down, depending on where you are in the situation in your life. To your point, right. the, the, the image guys were like gazillionaires at that point. They could have risked right. one way or the other, but sure. with it, where you are in your life, there is a way that you can scale a risk. So at the very least with the goal in mind, like I get to choose for myself. Right. And that's, that yeah. differs from where you are right now to where you were back when you first started, but it, it yeah. wasn't any and less think, risky, you know? I th- yeah. I think there's a big, I think there's a big thing too. I mean, you had said that I proclaimed here and I've always said like, I'm not the best drawer. Like sure. I'm never going to be, but like, but I hit a point, if there was a real important point in my career, it probably was me giving myself permission to stop having that as some sort of goal. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. because I realized at some point, even though I'm getting, was getting better and very, ha- and got to a place where I'm like, Oh, cool. This is how I draw. I'm happy. Like there's yeah. no more reference uh, on the tape. You know, we've all hit yeah. that point, right? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, when yeah. you hit that point, when you go to draw and you no longer have the stacks of who you want to be beside you, <laughs> you know, we've all been, been there. Like when I hit that stage, that's when I also was like, I have chosen an art form of storytelling in the, so it happens to be comics, but ultimately I have decided to tell stories. Yeah. I did not set out to become the best line maker, Sure, you know, and I, I feel like a lot of people in our world, a lot of our peers can get caught up in that part of it. So then it's not, they don't even have, there's not even enough time to get to the risk taking and career building because they're Mm -hmm. still focused on, I think line making, which I love, listen, I love to look at. It's awesome. Yeah. But there's a lot of other industries that you could probably go and crush it for sure. um, Where there's some real money there. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, if we look back at the history of our business, like we make, we make disposable quick, consumable entertainment and mm-hmm. when, you know over these last you know 10 to 15 years we've turned the production of that really upside down where right. people you know a lot right. of people are taking two and three months for 20 pages and that's sure. like yeah. man i don't know how anybody lives on on that you know like yeah. i think for the most part the 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 four of us we're all pretty f- proficient and pretty fast and economical with our time um, yeah. and, and have figured out those things. I mean, I've always, I've been impressed by all of you guys with the speed at which you were able to produce the caliber of fucking uh, artwork that you guys make. And now I'm going to tan. Now I'm going to break real quick. Cause you guys have been like blowing smoke up my ass this, this whole time. And I'm going to do the reverse <laughs> now. Um, Eric, I'm going to tell Dude. all your listeners, Eric, I cannot express to you how important Eric Canetti's blog was to such a huge amount of us artists. Hell yeah. 90 minute sketches, baby. Yeah. His 90 minute. I wouldn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but uh, if I look (laughs) into some of my my hard drives, you know, the old ones that you would would attach to your computer. I think I still have Mm -hmm. a, a folder named Eric Canetti. We at least like oh, I, I have it. Three hundred or five hundred. I do. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, the most <laughs> embarrassing. The oh, honest one. I also, dude. I also have the folder. I the thing is, I have every image from his blog on a on a on a Dropbox oh, yeah, yeah, folder. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. I went Me back too. to the first yeah. like the first yeah. drawing, and I started downloading. Like <laughs> download, download, download. So I have like his production yeah, from whatever same thing. <laughs> 1915 when he was born to to now. <laughs> <laughs> and that for me that like that was such an important era of art sharing um and oh, learning yeah. for me. Again, I had I was just getting over the part of realizing like I could no longer fake it. Like mm-hmm. I have faked my way into jobs and now I'm really stuck and i've got to i've got to get rid of some of these style things that mm-hmm. i'm hiding behind and and start learning how to fucking draw the figure and how to and not just draw but i think one thing that eric you you always did and i've been stealing it for fucking years i mean your i think the, your blog at the height of it you were like 2005 2006 you know, when you were just doing those 90 minutes all you know i the one thing i took away was you're you always you always talked about narrative 
in an yeah. image at one image. Right. So that was one of my first big takeaways. And one of my favorite ways that you did it, which I just have fucking cribbed hard is you always made like a, like it was like you were making a toy and then you added a little bit of a play set with it. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like you never just did like a night, you would do a pillar and a little bit of grass and some pebbles. Sure. Yeah. So it'd be like, Oh, if I bought that action figure, you don't want a whole, pl- you don't want a whole building along with it, but you wanted one <laughs> right. element to show like yeah. right. this character exists in an environment. And you, you did that so frequently in every one that I was like, once I learned that, I was like, fuck, that's so smart. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you just go back to do, you go sorry back. to interrupt, but it was uh, like, yeah, cutting, it. like, the solid part of a character, like if the character was like a half figure, it would literally cut the character leg at some point, like brutally, which would be something mm-hmm. that people wouldn't do. Like that would let the character, you know, the figure, you know, yep. to till the end of the page. Instead, it would cut it just in half, just brutally, which nobody was doing back then. And now there's a lot of people that started using it after those years. Yeah. yeah I mean, true. it was co- for me, it was illustration college because for many reasons, obviously, <clears throat> y- 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 the dynamic flavor of, of your lines and the storytelling, the narrative and, and everything. But also you fucking drew everybody. <laughs> it was yeah. like if I was like, oh, yeah. I wonder how, how, what's how do, how do people draw sight? Well, you loved Cyclops. You drew Cyclops a lot. That was your guy. Yeah, that was an easy Slim, one. Yeah. That was your dude. <laughs> Uh, but I was like, it was like, oh, I wonder how somebody draws cable. Well, Eric probably drawn has probably drawn cable. Like, oh, has how do people? Oh, yeah, Eric's drawn Jurassic Park. Yeah, he's drawn. <laughs> it was just a no end to it, yeah. and it was so so amazing to 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 cycle through over those those years where I was like, the other thing is is you it was during a period where you like spotted blacks. You just you were like intentionally got rid of them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there was like a real. For me, like the real, like, again, like, let's take a risk and not hide behind anything. Like, mm-hmm. and just go draw this shit. So when it looks bad, I can be like, why does this look bad? <laughs> like, why does it look wrong? <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, thank you. That That's all very kind of you. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think my bigger takeaway was there was an era back then of art sharing that it's so difficult to, to recapture now or oh. to like rebuild now. Yeah. There was just yeah. something about, What's the best way I could, I I was talking to Sean about this, where there is a passive way that we receive art now. Mm -hmm. And it's again, the theme of our conversation, I think it's in line, which is like, you know, we are not choosing that anymore, right? It's being sort of like spoon fed to us. And at any point, those people are the ones that are in charge of like turning the light switch on and off. But back mm-hmm. then there was an active way you could start your own RSS feed or whatever it is. And it would ping you or whatever it is. But every day that you woke up, especially when you had a level of consistency from a lot of different artists, that, that wasn't unique yeah. to me, but there was a level right. of consistency, maybe not daily, but definitely every other day or every couple of mm-hmm. days, because it was just this cyclone of like, <laughs> dude, pe- people post up art. I don't have to go as fast or as a, or right. I don't have to go as slow as B. I can just do it. But the consistency was there. It didn't have to be, uh, it didn't have to be finished. But the most important part is people were actively searching yeah. for that stuff, right? It wasn't yeah. a passive thing where we'd yeah. scroll through an endless sort of like way that we're doing it now. And my, my, hope- my favorite thing about that era was the, was Google reader, like our yeah. Feedly, one of those, because yeah. it was like today, we, which means I chose all of your blogs, but I chose it. And it didn't hierarchy anybody. Like uh, exactly. if you yeah. posted right. something, right. I would basically my first hour of the morning was like, get up, get coffee, look at my blog reader and right. just soak in, right. soak in work from Pascal, yeah. you know, Pascal with those oh. fucking paintings. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah, goddamn yeah. day, just a beast. Um, yeah. uh, who, who, uh, I mean, there were so many European artists that were like, that was the way you were just watching all this digital painting revolution for happen. Sure. Like, yeah, the, start no of man, that. the no man days. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Uh, then all of us coming up and watching each other, like, like getting it. And just like you said, it's, it's, it, it was, it's so passive now. Like I can't yeah, find yeah. anything I want. It's in a fucking square. That's I got to fucking do this to see it. Like I can't yeah. save it. I was thinking about I mean, the, the other day. Art, 
like uh, I was scrolling through Instagram and like I, I ran into a, a piece by Andrew Robinson, not even a, the most recent mm -hmm. one, but uh, it was like a couple of weeks older. And I was like, ah, I haven't seen yeah. his stuff for a while. And he's basically, no. if you ask me, is in at least my top three, if not the best artist, like yeah. overall. And, yeah. and he never he's pops amazing. up in my in my feed, you know? And 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 then yeah, I was yeah. thinking, like I was scrolling through, and I kept seeing posts by this guy who's just a writer, an Italian writer that I don't give a fuck about, but it keeps being in You're my right. feed, <laughs> and I keep asking myself, why do you think that I like you know this kind of things and not you know Andrew stuff, which I love and I wish right. yeah. I could see every day. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 so fucked yeah. up because probably this guy posts like every day and he's got a lot of engagement so the algorithm says okay this is the guy we should push this guy you know and True, right right and it's True, right. fucking fucking annoying man yeah and i, I mean i miss like the I, I, you know thing. i yeah go ahead tron i i i know i was just gonna say I, I hate the algorithm but now i'm finding a reason to love it because it's it's annoying mateo <laughs> <laughs> the, the silver linings to everything Scott, yeah, I don't want to hold days. you I, over, man. We are we okay. are going reaching into like 15 minutes over the hour that we're taking up your morning. I'm sure you're a super you're right. busy guy. If there's a if there is a big takeaway, and I want to help underline and make this bold, um, there, kids now, kids, you know, I'm I'm in <laughs> arm's length of 50, but kids now are going through this existential crisis of like, what do I do with my work? It seemed like we were, if not in the silver, definitely in the golden area of like art sharing. Right. Right. Like they're running into this existential crisis of like, how do I stay relevant in this space? Is it yelling at people? Is it like starting drama? Is it like, you know, right. starting beef with some, like all of these things are starting a YouTube channel and that's starting to become inundated with like irrelevancy as well, completely by right, accident, right. not because truly it is, but because like there's so many people who are doing it. I think right. one of the things that you really have to take into heart and you, it, you have to find a way to sort of like strategize around it is to, to the theme of what you were talking about. It's like, find a way to choose for yourself what success looks like, right? Yeah. Find a way, yeah. right? And yeah. choose for yourself, it. Yeah. choose for yourself, believe in yourself, be self-aware, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. I will say if, if, like one practical thing, like an actual actionable thing to take away for people that I would say is everybody needs to have a newsletter. Like there you in go. a day, in a day where all the social media apps that we've all spent years and years and years like chasing, they, we, again, we wake up any given day and they change how we get to interact or how people yes. interact with us on yes. it. The only things that we can do is make sure a uh, kind of, again, in the spirit of stupid fresh mess here is own all your content. And yep. Perfect. newsletters and is newsletters is going to do that thing where you mentioned about earlier, which is, you know, you don't need to scale up a hundred times right away, but the newsletter is a true way to start building. And it's, yeah. it's the closest thing to the old school blog, you it know, is. like yeah. it's yeah. It is. the closest thing to yeah. the days where we came from. Yeah. Because it's people saying, Hey, I want to hear from you. Right. And as exactly. much as you, you right. put it into your RSS feed. Right. Exactly. Stupid question, exactly. Scotty. Do you do you manage the, the the newsletter yourself, or you have a person that does it for the stupid fresh mess studio? It's split, Megan. So Megan is uh, runs all the you know sales announcements and you know exclusive cover releases and things like that, and then mm. my. I do like the personal stuff. So it's like the yeah. personal anecdotes or if a cover coming out and I have a real good, you know, a good story with it, but we're, we're split up pretty. I mean, she probably does heavier load on it because we're more often than not sending out stuff like here's a new cover drop, here's some new stuff or whatever. But, um, I still have to, it's very important to still be a part of it yourself because that yeah. that's it. Everybody still wants to connect with, you know, they want a real connection and they can that's tell right. when, when, when you're, when there's a wall between you and them. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I was just about to um, commend you for, man, it's clear that you do your own live streaming and interacting with your guests, right? Because yeah. you, you, you can talk and I love it. Right. And I was about to commend you on like being so interesting and engaging that neither of these guys did talking. Oh, yeah. Much yeah. I was talking during this. Really mesmerized. I just wanted to hear more about it. That's about what he was saying. So, yeah. I didn't yeah. have the time for my stupid jokes. 
Eric, that's the nicest way that anybody's ever said, Scotty, you talk too much. Usually people no. just say, <laughs> people usually just say, Scotty, you talk too much. That's not it. That's not it. You're actually saving. Like, have you ever, have you, like, there, there's been a couple of episodes where I couldn't join these guys who they've left, been left to their own devices. And Jesus fucking Christ, man. It's like... <laughs> I've listened in just to see like these guys are, I gave them compliment this one. They got one episode, right? Where I was like, good job, you dumb dumbs. You know, like, good, you <laughs> did it right. Here's a treat. But then there are seven episodes proceeding where I'm like, oh my freaking God. It's yeah, like basically when Eric the leaves interstate. the podcast, it's like when the parents have to leave the house with and leaving their kids for the first time in the house and they don't know, or, or maybe not even the kids, the dogs, and they don't know if they're gonna, you know, wreck the house apart. And they have a plane, they pray They're when just they being go dogs. Back. You know what I mean? Just, just, just all praying and peeing on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Scotty. Dude, I'm going to hit the stop button and then right. uh, I'll tell you what happens thank next. You, Thanks Scotty. for being on, buddy. Thank you so much hey, for coming thank on. Thank you guys. You guys are all awesome. Shut up. All right, all right shut up. Hey, guys. My new sketchbook, Thumb Shark, is finally out. That's great, Fratello. Congrats. Eric, what do you think? Wow, Mateo. This book has really changed how I think about art. The style, the details, the inking techniques, not to mention the colors. Everything on this book is off the chart. You are so far ahead of any other artist, especially me. I know I always say I don't like your Mr. Freeze book, but that's actually a lie. I was just jealous of your incredible talent because I love everything you do. And sadly, I know deep in my heart that I'll never be at your extraordinary level. You truly are the best artist on planet Earth. This book is a game changer, man. I think everyone out there should go and order Mateo's new art book, Dumb Shark, before it sells out. Gee willikers, Eric. That was an incredible endorsement. You really made me want to buy it. How can I get my hands on it? You can find it on www.essentialsequential.com or if you're in Europe, you can order it on www.pulps.fr. Wow, Eric. I didn't know you were such a big fan of mine. Thank you. I really don't need to add anything else. You said it all. What an asshole. Wait, what?